Hey, what's up, you guys? Great to have you back on the show. I'm Sean David. Thanks for tuning in. In today's video, I want to take a look at some NBA legends telling interesting and mostly funny stories about one of my favorite players of all time, Larry Bird. So sit back, buckle up, and let's start the video. So the first player who's going to tell the story is Doc Rivers, one of the best coaches in today's NBA and, of course, a great player back in the 1980s and the 1990s. One of the most known stories, but still always fun to listen to. But when you played against somebody, do you remember? Well, you had the bird night. I had the bird New night. Yeah, yeah that, was, that was a tough night, man. <laughs> That, you know, that, the biggest argument that night is, uh, well, you only scored six on me. Yeah. You know? But did, you, nobody was Garden Bird, were they? Well, we were trying. You were trying no, to. You know, but when, when a guy is literally coming up the court calling his shots, uh, and, you know, Bird talked a lot of trash. Uh, um, and that's in New Orleans. That's in New Orleans. And that game, we're on the free throw line, and he's like, he literally says, um, left side <laughs> over uh, across the three, and you're listening to him. That's that's a tough filler. But, okay, so you guys got – Antoine Carr and Cliff Levingston got fined by Fratello, I think. For, and, and Eddie Johnson for celebrating. Celebrating Bird. Yeah, it was the best film session. Every time I – when I see Mike, we still laugh. God, it was so a, good. It was the greatest film session ever because that, back then you didn't have – you know, you watched the real game and just went, you know, with a video. And Mike rewound the celebration 20 times. Oh. He just kept, re not the shot, he just kept rewinding it, showing the guys, you remember, they were giving each other high five. And then, and then somebody falls off the bench. Yeah, too. that was Eddie Johnson. Yeah. Eddie Johnson falls off the bench in laughter, uh, and Antoine Carr and Cliff gives each other high five. And our film session was 20 <laughs> minutes of that. <laughs> So it, it was. It wasn't it, somebody not playing good defense no, on Bird. It was you it was, guys it celebrating just, Larry Bird. And Fratello wouldn't let it go. It just kept rewinding. Oh <laughs> and the next story is going to be from one of my favorite players, Rod Strickland, one of the most underrated point guards of the late 1980s and, of course, the 1990s, especially playing for the Portland Trailblazers. He didn't play too long against Larry Bird, but still, he got a very interesting story to tell. I wasn't around long because he was hurt when I was playing that first year or second year. But I just remember one uh, quick thing. We were playing against him and I think I stole the ball from him. And I just remember him turning around saying, you little piece of <laughs> And I was like, that, to me, that was Larry Bird. And I was so happy because I'm like, that Larry Bird told me you're a little piece of shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, because I idolize Larry Bird. I just call me a piece of shit. So what? You do, you do so a very what? good job at editing yourself yeah, yeah, yeah. on that. <laughs> And the next story is going to be by Chris Webber. When Chris Webber came to the NBA, Larry Bird was just on his way out. So, of course, they didn't actually play against each other in the NBA, but they had that dream team experience. Yeah, but you are uh, you got Jordan who talks, you got Barkley who talks, and then you got Bird who talks. Who talked the most when you played against the dream team? Why do you think my generation grew up talking so much? Guys? They, 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 taught us, they taught us how to do it. We used to watch all those uh, blooper tapes and everything else. And uh, I, I don't know who talked the most. The, the best, the best was um, uh, my man Rodney Rogers. Strong, fast, quick, athletic, and Bird just set him up in a the corner. They, someone drives to the corner, stock and pass out the Bird, and here you see Rodney Rogers take a full sprint. And I'm talking about, you know how uh, how Zion blocked that shot a couple weeks ago? Yeah. That's where, like, like where Rodney Rogers came from. Except, unlike the young kid that <laughs> shot the shot, in the middle of uh, him being in the midair, uh, Bird says, welcome to the parachute club, rookie. And watches him go by him, <laughs> shoots the ball, and, like, Curry does what Bird did because he shot it and just kept walking down, like, shaking his head like these dumb youngsters. They don't never get it. And the next story is going to be from John Stockton, a guy who was never known for trash talking or anything like that. But still, of course, he also had a Larry Bird experience, even though he was just standing next to the events. Bird never said anything? Well, he did, but not to me. I, he, I remember as a rookie, uh, he came in, <laughs> he walked by our bench at the Salt Palace and said, I feel like 43 tonight. <laughs> And he came out, he scored 43 in the third quarter and checked checked himself out with a 20-point victory, and uh, I was fairly impressed with that yeah. one. So he just picks a random number, I feel like, hmm, 43. And he says it yeah. to, the, to, yeah. to the bench? Yeah, yeah. 
it was fairly impressive, you know, especially <laughs> yeah. when he lived it, when he backed it up. <laughs> And the next story that we're going to listen to is from Danny Ainge, the GM of the Boston Celtics. Danny played alongside Larry Bird, so of course he knows some stories. There was a there was a lesser uh, told story where he made a bet with the trainer of the New York Knicks, and uh, before the game, we were out shooting three. Larry and I were shooting threes before the game, and Larry. He said, hey, I'll bet you 20 bucks you can't bank one in like that in the game. And Larry goes, you're on. And so the game proceeds, and we're behind by, or we get ahead by about 20 points the fourth quarter. Our bench comes in the game, and all of a sudden, you know, the Knicks are starting to creep back in the game, but it still feels like we have the game under control. And the trainer for the Knicks looks down at me and, you know, says, like, get, hey, get Larry his attention. He sends him the sign, like, you owe me 20 bucks. You never banked in a three-pointer. And Larry goes, crap, I can't believe I forgot that, you know. And he was, and so, sure enough, the game gets down to seven points, I think it was. And Casey Jones puts the starters back in the game. And within the first two or three possessions, Larry gets a shot on the corner and banks in a (laughs) three-pointer. At at that stage of the game, I mean, with a close game, I could see it with a 20-point lead, but I mean, I'll never, I mean, I got so many of the confidence stories like that, but that's just, he he cared more about that 20-buck bet than he did. Oh, yeah. From one teammate to another, Kevin McHale. I think he's the guy who had the most Larry Bird stories on YouTube. That guy had so many fun experiences with Larry Bird. And I just want to show you a couple of them. I think the story that sums up Larry the best was <clears throat> back then when we flew commercial. We didn't fly private. Um, we played in a Tuesday night game in Cleveland. And, of course, we got up for the first flight out. We had a game on Wednesday night in New Jersey. <clears throat> Snowstorm hits Cleveland. We're at the airport at 7 in the morning. Flight's canceled at 7. It's canceled at 8. It's canceled at 9. It's canceled at 10. Canceled at 11, 12. We finally leave about 1.30 or 2 in the afternoon. We fly up to New Jersey. Now the storm has kind of moved into Jersey. And the bus driver says, well, I can't get to the, air- I can't get to the hotel into the arena. I can only go to one place. Well, we had a game that night. We go to the arena. So we get to the arena, and I mean, we're dragging. And we're sitting on the locker room, and, you know, and everybody's kind of, you know, we're tired. And, you know, and, and all of a sudden, you know, the coach gives a little bit of a speech of, come on, man, guys, we're playing basketball. Let's get ready to go. And Larry stands up, and Larry says, a couple other few, few choice words. <laughs> and he says, I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to take it out on their rear ends. <laughs> so I was like, oh, all right, so let's go. So we go on the floor. <laughs> Elbert King's sitting there, and Larry walks up to Elbert King and goes, don't take this butt whooping personally. I've been eating hot dogs all day. And then <laughs> Albert King looks at him like, you've been eating hot dogs all day. What's that got to do with me? <laughs> and we went out and just hammered him. I mean, we, we, we terrorized them. And that was Larry. There was no excuses. I mean, he just played. And I tell you, that was just his competitive nature. But a day when you fly all day and eat hot dogs in the airport, best thing was Albert's look on his face like, what hot dogs got to do with me? <laughs> you guys used to fly commercial? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, yes, we that's did. The I never knew that's that. That's the takeaway. Yeah, I never knew that. I was uh, getting ready to start a game and get up to the jump ball, and, and, and Larry said, "You know, just just out of the blue, he goes, go ahead, Kevin, tell Elvin Hayes what you told me.' And I didn't tell him anything. And I said, well, "Go ahead, tell him. Like, you said you were gonna kick his ass." And I'm like, "Oh man!" And Elvin Hayes is looking at me. Well, at that point, it was hard to say no. I didn't say anything. I said, oh, "I guess so." But you know, Larry just got stuff started up. From a former Boston Celtics teammate to the complete opposite of former Los Angeles Lakers, Byron Scott, a great shooting guard from the 1980s and the 1990s. Of course, he had his experiences with Larry Bird, so let's check it out. A lot of people don't know this. You you probably know this, Dan, but Larry Bird was one of the biggest trash talkers in basketball. And, And a lot of people say, really? You know, they thought it was Reggie or Charles... Larry Bird talked more trash on the basketball court than, than anybody I've ever played against. And he told us two, he, he told me two things one game. You know, our rotations, uh, double teaming Kevin McHale always had to rotate to the corner, and Larry Bird was the one shooting it. You know, so he shot one, and I mean, I, I'm trying to block this shot, and he, he would just tell me, Scott, you're a little too late. You know, a little too late. So we playing him, and the last, the last play, he says uh, to James Worthy, he says, you guys don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go right over there at that corner. <laughs> he said, they're going to set a screen for me. We're taking the ball out. He said, I'm going to curl right over. And he's telling us to play. 
He's telling us to play before they even take it out. He said, I'm going to go right over to that corner, and I'm going to catch it, and I'm going to shoot it, and I'm going to tie the game or win the game, whatever the case may be. They take the ball out, and I think it was either Danny or, or, or um, DJ. the late, great DJ. Yeah. Take the ball out. The man curled right to the corner, caught the shot, <laughs> shot a three, <laughs> and game over. It. <laughs> it's like, are you effing kidding me? <laughs> my Larry Bird story. All right, you guys, that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time. Peace. I'm out. Hey, you guys, if you're active on Facebook, I can really recommend Open Court. As an NBA fan, you should find everything you need. If it's funny NBA videos, impressive highlights, or even NBA news, I check out Open Court every day.